Okay, the top dead sensor. Started looking at this broken hole. He has an amateur move. Well, pump installed. Time for the timing chain. Okay, so as you call links are in between the dots. You will notice this one has seated nicely and this one has not. So I'll have to turn this one a little bit backwards. So that falls into place. There's a little bit of movement, so I'm going to push it to the back while well, I tighten it down. And by the back I mean pushing it this way. So the idea is if I have pushed this guide inwards and later when I'm driving something happens and there's a lot of tension on this chain, it will push it backwards and immediately I have a little bit of slack that the timing chain tensioner has to catch. But if I can avoid that situation altogether, then in my head this is better. Cool. So, that's done. Let's just verify the torque specifications. So there's three, also 12 newton meters. And this bigger one on this side is 22. So let's verify it's on 12. Done. Done. Twenty two. So let's just double check. Done. I installed the, the timing chain tensioner. So that's all place, these two bolts have been torqued down. So everything is on time. Well the engine is seems to be timed, so all that's left is to remove the drill bits on that side and then release that. So let's do that. That one out, that one out. Cool. So these are then free to move. And you're seated everywhere nicely. That is seated. And then, bam. There we go. All right, welcome back, everyone. So, today was spent cleaning engine parts, removing the silicon, giving them a wash. Um, and I'm kind of over silicon. <laughs> There's so much silicon everywhere. But anyway, so I have the surfaces clean that, that needs to be clean. So, and also what I've done off camera is to fit the new, not the new, but the K20 knock sensor. I don't put in this bolt because there's still some threads that still cling on to that bolt, this bolt. 
At first I had to either clean it or find a different bolt. For now I'm just putting on these two and I'll torque these down. And I'll later when I, that bolt is clean or I have a replacement bolt I'll just torque that one in. These ones are 44 newton meters. Right, you join me ready to install the oil pan. Surfaces are clean. And here's the, the baffle sump that I'm going to install. Very nice product, I must say. Bit tricky to install because it's it's two individual parts that you have to somehow harmonize as you install them. Um, I stared a bit at the oil sump and this insert to try and figure out what the best way is to install all of them and I thought this one needs to be installed individually first and then the oil pan over it but that's not the case so I flipped the engine back right side up and I'm gonna insert the oil sump with the insert from the bottom and the reason why I'm doing that is I thought this gate that goes around the oil pump had to be around the oil pump as before you add the sump but if you look at this arm that they've placed at the bottom, as the oil sump comes down, oh, the oil sump, the oil pump, uh, oil pump arm comes down, it will clo automatically close the gate. So, yeah, cool. Let's try. What's up, guys? So the timing cover has been fitted yesterday. Yes, new day. <laughs> um, and it was bolted down the silicon just looking at how much has peeled out us to me i think that i've nailed the quantity so that that's looking good that should be dry uh, i got a, a third bolt for this engine mount so these three are torqued down so that's success and i just finished with the oil sump so baffle inside um just gone on so i've put silicon and then slowly fitted the the sump tighten it down so it it equally touches everywhere and then um talk down as per the the workshop manual so 12 newton meters in that pattern and i've followed that pattern twice just to make sure that everything is is nice and tight so that's good to go now i'll be moving on to the the intake manifold because I remember taking the intake manifold off the K20, the water pump was in the way, so I had to remove the water pump before I could take off the, the intake manifold. So I'm assuming that's the same. So I already replaced the knock sensor behind it, so I don't need to get in there again, so I can fit the intake and then fit the water pump. Um, and then all that's left to do for now is to clean up these ports because there's there's a little bit of a build up so i'll just tilt the engine a little bit to this side and then just scrape everything off so that's good to go and um i think then then this will be ready to put on the engine hoist so i can remove this k24 flywheel and then start fitting the the light wheel lightweight flywheel and clutch and gearbox so it's one complete unit and that's how i'll drop it into the honda ek all right as you can see the rsp intake manifold has been bolted down i've talked all the the bolts and nuts to 22 newton meters the workshop manual doesn't spy, um, specify any pattern so I just started in the middle and worked outwards. So that's done. Um, now I think I'm gonna just remove the stock fuel rail um, and start testing the, the works fuel rail. Um, testing, I mean test fitting. So I just un removed this and it's actually a very nice piece. So I also saw that I thought these, these holes I will have to plug but they actually not drilled all the way through. So if you ever want the option to mount a sensor or a, um, a analog 
fuel pressure gauge, you can just drill this out and then utilize these already drilled and tapped ports. Well, not drilled all the way, but tapped ports. I'm not going to use them. I have a, a digital um, gauge that I will be running inside the cabin with with alarm capability, so I don't need. I'm not going to use these, so I'm just going to leave them open as is. And yeah, so let me start removing that and then put this on, see how it looks. All right, so I've put in one injector just to check the spacing out. So I've left the original spacer that was on the stock fuel rail in place. And if I push it all the way down, the injector doesn't see it all the way, which means that I need to take out that spacer. So this fuel rail is meant to work without the spacers. So I'll take that out. Cool. So now I can fit the rest and then uh, I know without the spacers they will seat nicely. Alright, fuel rail installed with the stock 310cc K K20Z3 injectors. And uh, I really like it. It's a very nice looking piece. So I need to go to a shop and buy all the, the AN fittings that I need to get the system plumbed. But that's that's for latest worry for now is just getting the engine ready to to drop into the the ek and um, once it's dropped in i'll i'll worry about all the details cool so the water pump siliconed up bolted down so i just need to install the water pipes still and then that is done uh, this side already connected up so i thought it's a good time to tighten down this crank pulley bolt before I forget so I'm going to quickly do that all right so step one is to torque this down to 49 newton meters okay that's 49 now the second step according to the manual is then to rotate from that point another 90 degrees so i'm not ju just adjusting the torque range up so i don't hurt it cool. then i'm gonna zero out that dial That is where I need to end. So let's see. I fitted the alternator and the tensioner and pulley from the K20 assembly because this bearing runs silent. The one that was on the K24 runs nicely, but you can have a listen, its bearing is not as happy. So that's why I'm going to stop with the engine for this point. So that's a good milestone achieved. Um, and now I'm going to go back to the Honda Civic Type R because I need to get that wiring the wiring harnesses out. The steering column needs to come out. So let's go to that. Okay, so I'm ready to try and pull out the dash. Uh, I think I have removed everything that I needed to. So I can lift the top skin out. So, um, so I'll switch on a camera and then see my uh, win of failure. And uh, by the way, the amount of bolts that I have removed up to this point, like a million, a million bolts. Hopefully 
it's only a million needed to remove this dash so I'll put you guys on one side and then um, see if I can actually get this out There is one freaking wire, this one, going all the way to I zoom the light sensor. So um, it seems that's the only thing left, so remove that and then the thing is free. So it's a, it's a kind of one, so yeah, progress. I need to continue stripping out everything. <laughs> in order to get the things that I need I need to disassemble everything there because the wiring harnesses do go all around those bars so and also to get to the pedal assemblies everything needs to come out so let me get started this is so with the engine assembled mild milestone achieved I think I'm gonna I'm gonna end part three there Although there's a few more things to assemble on the engine side, like the auto assemble, but fit to it, the half shaft, the gearbox, the flywheel. Uh, I'll get to that closer to the assembly, but I'm going to do that in the next video. So I think it's best to end this video at this point. I'm super excited for this engine. Um, uh, while building, building this engine, it, I just realized again what a beast of this engine this, this is going to be. So. I'm very much looking forward to it and I can't wait for this thing to run and do some skids. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.